Hey up everyone, I'm Ace and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile. This is a little strange that I'm doing this now, because A, I have not uploaded anything on either channel in a very, very long time, and also B, um, it's been a very long time since I've done a Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile, period. I've done two, I've done a Raid Raptor deck profile, which is still my most viewed video on the channel this is being uploaded to, and a Cyber Dragon deck profile, which has changed drastically since the last time I profiled it. So if you guys want to see uh, that the update that I've made to that, um, then let me know down below and I'll make sure to get that one out uh, at some point. Uh, I, won't, I won't say soon due to how inconsistent my uploading is, but we're here with a new deck profile and this is a brand new deck. It literally came out as of the time I'm recording this yesterday on Duelist Nexus. Uh, and this is going to be I don't really know what the actual name for this de deck is called. I like calling it Chimera Phantom Beast. You want to reason it's not here in the top left. Chimera Phantom Beast just simply does not flaw. Well, it does, but I don't like having no space. So Chimera Chimera Phantom Beast um, is what I'm personally calling it. And uh, some people might be... Oh, I've completely forgotten, actually. Uh, this should not be here. This was for a joke. Let me, uh, let me put in what I'm actually playing. I'm actually playing Book of Moon. There we go. <laughs> Uh, I did that as a joke. Um, so, um, this is a very interesting deck. For anyone who doesn't know what this deck is, essentially this is a completely retrained version of Gazelle the King of Mythical Beasts, uh, which is a very, very old Yu-Gi-Oh card, and I believe, quote, uh, don't, don't judge me if I'm wrong, I haven't watched the anime, I believe Yugi used this card and Burfamet in the anime. Um, at one point, I don't know what he used them for. I just know that he used them. I'm pretty sure he used them. So that's what that's basically what this entire archetype is. It's a retrained version of these two cards, uh, and also the fusion monster that goes along with them, uh, and this whole entire um, crazy strategy that utilizes the brand new monster type of the illusion monsters. So we'll see how this actually ends up going. But this is a deck that I made. I'm so far okay with this. Um, I think this deck is actually looking very, very good right now. Uh, so I think this, I think this is a good build for the deck. But let's get right on into this. And uh, let me, uh, let me know uh, how you, what you guys think of this deck down below. So right off the bat, we're playing three copies of Gazelle, the King of Mythical Claws. Uh, this card says on normal or special summon at a level 5 Fiend or a Chimera Fusion from your deck to your hand. And if it's sent to the graveyard as material for a Fusion summon, you can add an Illusion monster from your deck to your hand. Both of those effects are really, really good. However, usually, if uh, an effect allows you to summon this card or the Burfamet from deck, you're usually summoning the Burfamet because the Burfamet's effect is on normal or special summon at a level 4 Beast monster and or a Chimera Fusion from your deck to your hand. So therefore, you can add both Gazelle and the Chimera Fusion from your deck to your hand all in one summon, which is actually very, very powerful. The only downside to this is that you're locked in the Fusion Monsters the rest of the turn, which is why I'm not a huge fan of I'm playing Link Monsters down here, but it's, I didn't have anything else to really to throw in here, so I'm playing those Link Monsters. Um, this card also has the effect, though, where if it's sent to the graveyard as material for a Fusion Summon, you can target an Illusion Monster in your graveyard and Special Summon it. And both of these effects are going to be uh, coming up in your mainline combo. You're going to use both of these cards to fuse into Chimera, and then use both of their, uh, all three of their effects all at once to just go off from there. Next up, three copies of Mirror Sword Knight. This is the one-card combo for the entire deck. Uh, this card has the effect where if this card battles a monster, neither can be destroyed by that battle. That is an effect that every single Illusion Monster currently in the game shares. And also, has the effect where you can use each of the effects of this card once per turn. Uh, as a quick effect, you can tribute this card to special summon a monster from your deck that mentions Chimera Fusion, except Mirror Sword Knight. That can get you to either your Gazelle, your Burfament, or your Cornfield Coatl. I don't think there's any more cards. Yeah, no, none of the other cards mention that. You can get you to any three of those cards. However, usually you're only summoning Burfament off this because uh, Gazelle is, a, is an actual normal summon. Burfament is a tribute summon, so usually you're getting Burfament so you can get that uh, double uh, search. Uh, but it also has the effect where uh, when a monster your opponent controls activates its effect while you control Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast. As a quick effect, you can banish this card from your field or graveyard to negate the effect. And should be noted, both of your fusion monsters for this archetype, uh, their name becomes Chimera the King, the, uh, their, their, their name becomes Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast while they're on the field uh, or in the graveyard. Is that correct? When they're on the field or on the graveyard, yeah, and on the field or on the graveyard. So both of them do that. So usually you are, you are actually are controlling that. So you're going to have a free monster negate, which is good. Cornfield Kawato is another one-card combo. It, it literally, this card literally just searches the Mirrored Sword Knight, so 
Uh, that's basically it. But um, as with all illusion monsters, if this card battles a monster, that can be destroyed by that battle. You can use each spawn effect to this card once per turn. You can discard this card to add a monster that mentions Chimera Fusion from your, to your hand, except for Cornfield Waddle. And when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a card, you, uh, targets a card you control, while you control Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast, you can banish this card from your field or graveyard to negate the effect, and if you do destroy that card, all three, all four of these cards are just great, uh, crazy powerful. For this specific set strategy. Now, I will say, is this strategy good competitively? Probably not. I think the Illusion Monsters are too early on to really have a good grasp of whether or not they're actually good. Uh, so, I don't think this. Uh, I don't think this is actually a very good deck yet. But it has potential if, assuming we get more Illusion support. Next up, we are playing a single copy of the OG Gazelle and the OG Burfermet. Reason being, you can actually summon them from deck off of Chimera Fusion by just banishing the Chimera Fusion from your graveyard. You can just summon both of these cards uh, from your deck, um, from your deck or graveyard or hand. I actually completely forget. Is it? Uh, it is deck or graveyard. We'll get into that, but that's the only entire. That's the entire reason we're playing this. And I've actually had this happen to me before, where um, just activating uh, just. Activating that Chimera Fusion to some of these two cards in the deck gave me enough uh, attack points to have lethal. So that actually does pop up. So I do like the one ofs, uh, at least in here. Next up, we're playing two cops in Nightmare Magician. At first, I was like, why on earth are people playing this card in this deck? This seems awful because it doesn't have an effect that allows it to special summon itself. It doesn't mention Chimera Fusion. Why are people playing this card? Uh, I miss the fact that Bing, Big Wing Burfumet says, if it's sent to the graveyard as material for a fusion summon, target an illusion monster in the graveyard special summon it. I knew it had that effect. I thought the illusion monster it summoned had to mention Chimera Fusion. That is not the case. So, if you have a Nightmare Magician in your graveyard and you send Big Wayne Burfumet, um, uh, if, you, if you use Burfumet as fusion material, you get to bring back the Nightmare Magician. You can also use it with Chimera's graveyard effect as well by banishing the Chimera, bring back the Nightmare Magician. That's actually the usual way you're bringing it out. Uh, your turn one combo actually ends your, sorry, not your turn one, your uh, one card combo ends in this. And this is a fantastic card so far for Illusions. This card has the effect where if this card battles a monster, neither can be destroyed by that battle. Also, at the end of the damage step, if this card battles an opponent's monster, you can take control of that opponent's monster. And also, once per turn, at the start of the damage step, if another monster attacks, you can destroy one card in the field. And you can only use each of these effects uh, once per turn, I believe, is that how it is? Or is it just in there? The effect just ends there, never mind. Um, but this is a very, very powerful effect for two reasons. One, it's a 2500 attack point beater that a change of hearts to your opponent's monsters. I think that's actually really good, especially because it's like, it's essentially non-targeting removal. Um, it, it's, it's in a little bit of a weird way, but also just the fact that if this is the only monster you have, you can just attack your opponent's highest attack point monster, take control of it. Due to the fact that this card is an illusion monster, it can't be destroyed, that neither can be destroyed by the battle, so it doesn't matter whether you take damage, whether your opponent takes damage, it does not matter. You're automatically taking control of that monster. Then, you can attack with your opponent's monster since it's still the same battle phase, not only destroy their monster by battle or deal a bunch of damage to them, you also get the second effect of Nightmare Magician to target a card you're on the field and destroy it. Oh, sorry, wait. Oh, no, that effect doesn't even target, you just destroy a card, never mind. Um, so that's very, very powerful. Nightmare Magician in this deck is actually incredibly good, and I highly recommend at least two. You can't play three, but realistically you only need two because you can send it to the graveyard off a bunch of different effects. So I don't think it's actually necessary. And also, it is searchable off of Gazelle, um, since it just adds an illusion monster um, for its graveyard effect. It just adds an illusion monster. That illusion monster does not have to mention Chimera Fusion, so it's very good. And that's it for playing three copies of King of the Swamp. I... I have been tempted to drop this down to two. So far, I'm still playing it at three, um, simply because Chimera the Illusion Beast mentions uh, in its its fusion materials are Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast specifically, and it doesn't specify anything about having to use those materials. So you can actually use Kingdom Swamp to use a fusion substitute, but also it's powerful just to actually discard at a poly. Um, both of those effects actually come up in this deck because uh, you are fusion something a lot, so both of those effects will be coming up a lot so i think that's very very powerful um so far i'm still using the three king of the swamp you can probably get away with just two but for now i'm still using the three two copies of etching chain i want to get the polymerization as fast as i possibly can so not only am i running king of the swamp i'm also running fright for patchwork down here uh alongside edge of chain to obviously get you know, double surge but also a reason that i actually really like edge of chain is that stuff like chimera require a beast and a fiend 
Edge and Chain is a Fiend. So as long as you have a Beast in your hand, a single Fright for Patchwork gets you the Fiend and the Polymerization. Then you can use the Polymerization with the Beast that you already had and the Edge and Chain you just search to go into Chimera and get all your plays rolling. So I think that's actually very, very powerful uh, and why I actually feel comfortable running Edge and Chain in a deck like this. Next up, we're playing one copy of Monster Reborn. Uh, these are just the one-ofs that I ended um, I, I ended the deck with. Uh, I ran out of cards to really add. You don't necessarily need to run Monster Reborn, but it does help because if you if you draw a Monster Reborn, eventually you can just Reborn the Mirror Sword Knight and do the entire one-card combo all over again. So it is actually powerful. I do like Reborn. Um, so I think it's at least good as a one-of um, in, in this deck. Uh, Harpy's Feather Duster, obviously a one. I'm obviously playing the two Cosmic Cyclone in here as well. Um, I... I the very first, blah, 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 sorry. The very first time I looked at this deck, I was in, I was under the impression that this was an OTK deck. In fact, I was actually experimenting with like Raigeki and stuff uh, in this deck. However, I ended up dropping that quite quickly because I realized that uh, in order to actually get the OTK with Chimera, you need to attack a monster, and also to get even the benefit of Nightmare Magician, your opponent needs needs to just straight up control a monster. So both of these cards. The, OT, the potential OTK cards, you need to, your opponent needs to control a monster, which is why I'm no longer uh, running stuff like Rageki. But I still, I do still like the Harpy's Feather Duster just so I at least deal with our opponent's back row. I think it's very, very powerful just for that. Uh, and a double Cosmic to also do that. You can run three Cosmic. You can probably drop a copy of Fusion Armament, if I'm being entirely honest, to run three uh, Triple Cosmic. But uh, for now, I'm still just running the two. I think it's a good, um, I think it's a perfectly fine. Uh, one Foolish Burial. The reason I'm playing Foolish Burial is because um, it gets... I'm playing Foolish Burial to get any of my Illusion monsters into the graveyard. Specifically Mirror Sword Knight or Nightmare Magician. Corpio Kuwato doesn't really do much in the graveyard, but it does have the gate in the graveyard, which is actually kind of nice. But Foolish Burial not only can send Mirror Sword Knight or Corpio Kuwato to the graveyard, both of which have graveyard effects that allow you to get in the gates, so that's good. But it can also send something like Nightmare Magician if you don't actually open up the um, the combo. You can at least set up Nightmare Magician in the graveyard to use later. There are some strange little combos that you can do without the Mirror Sword Knight, without the, um, the one card combo. There are some tiny combos that you can do that at least end on like a Chimera and a, and a Chimera Fusion, but don't necessarily get you into Nightmare Magician all, um, all the time. So Foolish Burial is just helpful to at least get that uh, Illusion Monster in the graveyard so you can bring it back later with something like Burferman. Uh, Tile of the Cyclone, I've already talked about. Three Chimera Fusion. I mean, why wouldn't you run three? It's what the entire deck is based around. Um, this card, though, uh, at first, when I first read this, I was like, what on earth does this card really do? And then, well, not what does it do. Not what does it do. I knew what it did, but, like, why is this card good? Like, why did, this card does not seem amazing. Uh, for starters, it allows you to get fusion summon a fusion monster from your, from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or Theo's material, including a beast or a fiend. So not only not only does it uh, restrict you into having to use a beast or a fiend, it is uh, so therefore it's worse than poly. It, it's not one of the new fusion cards which can which have an effect that allows you to use, uh, fusion summon with cards from a deck. But after actually playing with this card in this entire deck a lot more, this card really doesn't need to um to fusion summon with cards from deck. Usually in your in your turn one combo, you get into a position where you can use the you can use a gazelle and a burfamet that you uh, that you summon in order to go chimera fusion using both of them into the chimera and then you get three effects off. And a lot of the times you actually want to use the gazelles and the burfamets from the hand or field because then if you use them from deck then yes, they do still get the effects if they're used as uh, fusion if they're used as fusion material from deck. But I really like using it from the hand, uh, hand and field, uh, simply because I think it doesn't really uh, hurt you all that much. If this card actually had an effect that allowed you to fusion someone from deck, I think it would be too good and arguably ban worthy. So I think I think just running uh, the one, um, I think just having it be hand and field was actually fine. The only thing I wish this card said is that you can also banish cards from your graveyard as material, um, but that was like maybe a once per turn or whatever. That's the only thing I would I would say, but um, that maybe that's just me. I think uh, I think not having it be a fusion summon from deck is totally fine, um, but this card also has the effect where during your main phase of this card sent to the graveyard, 
Uh, if this card is in your graveyard and you have Chimera, the Flying Mythical Beast, on your field or in your graveyard, you can activate one of these effects, either add this card to your hand or banish this card, and summon both a Gazelle and a Burferment from your deck and or graveyard. That's very, very powerful because not only is it a quick play spell, um, it can, it just recycles itself immediately after using it, and its fusion summon effect is not once per turn. So if you if you get if you Chimera fusion into a card, you can immediately bring it back off its own effect and then fusion summon again with the same copy. So I think it's actually very very helpful and a definite three of in this deck. Uh, next, two copies of Palmarization. I've already talked about this with Edge of Chain and stuff like Fight for, for, for Patchwork. Uh, just very, very helpful to get to something like Polly. Also, I really want him to run a deck that has Polly because I actually have um, three secret rare Palmarizations uh, that I have no idea where I got them from, but I looked it up one day. It's, I think, the most expensive Palmarization um, that is on the market, at least in secret rare. And I have no idea when I got them, so I really want to just run a deck that has Palmarization. This is one of those decks. Uh, Fright for Patrick, already talked about this. Uh, Fusion Armament's a little bit of an interesting one. You can probably drop this card down to two. For now, I'm still playing the three of of this. Uh, his card has the effect where you can reveal a Fusion Monster in your extra deck, and especially summon one of the Fusion Materials whose name is mentioned on that monster from your extra deck or graveyard, but until the end of your opponent's turn, it cannot attack, and its, and its effects, if any, are negated. So... How do, exactly do you use this? You use this by, you activate it, and you reveal Chimera the Illusion Beast, um, and then you get to summon a Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast straight from your extra deck. Now you might be questioning what exactly this accomplishes. Um, it gives you a Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast on your side of the field. The more I'm using this, the more I'm thinking it's not actually that good, but I think it's fine at least to be able to at least get the Flying Mythical Beast on your side of the field to allow you to go into Chimera the Illusion Beast, which is the way you're OTKing. You don't have to OTK in this deck, it's, um, but if you are going second, uh, there are times where Chimera can come in, can come in very uh, handy to allow you to go for that OTK if you just want to get out of, if you just want to get out of the duel very, very quickly. Um, next up, three copies of Book of Moon. This is just good interruption and just a good card over overall. If you're playing this a little bit more casually, probably you can drop the Book of Moon for literally whatever the frick you want, uh, since it's your deck and I'm not your mom. So uh, that's that. Um, Chimera the King of Phantom Beasts, though. Great, great card in this deck. One beast and a fiend. Um, stat line 2100, 1800. That's honestly whatever. Its effect is really all. This card re usually doesn't stick around on the field all that much. But it has the effect where this card's name becomes Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast while on the field or in the graveyard. You can only use each of the following effects of this card once per turn. This card has the effect where if this card is fusion summoned, you can activate this effect, send a random card from your opponent's hand to the graveyard during the end phase of this turn. That's very good because of this, because of just a free discard. Nice, I'll take it. Also, it's, I think it's a fair discard because you don't get the hand knowledge. You just get to rip a random card. It's similar to like Omega, except you don't get it back and it, did, and it, uh, it sends to the graveyard rather than banishes it. So if it's like, uh, if it's something that, uh, that uh, procs off being sent to the graveyard, for example, a tier limit card, just as an example, then I think it's actually kind of fair. Uh, this card also, though, has the effect where during your opponent's turn, as a quick effect, you can banish a card from your graveyard, target a beast, fiend, or illusion monster in your graveyard, and special summon it. Should be noted that does not have to mention Chimera Fusion, it can be any beast, any fiend, any illusion. During your opponent's turn, banish this card, that's a quick effect, and reborn that monster. That's usually how you're going through something like a Nightmare Magician, and it's just a great, great card overall. I'm playing three, you realistically, I, I will be honest, you realistically only need two. Uh, I'm playing three because I ran out of space and I didn't really, I wanted to personally make this a little bit more of a casual deck. They might think that putting Book of Moon in here, um, um, like, uh, deteriorates that and makes it less uh, casual, especially for the type of casual that me and my friends like, to, or at least my friends like to play. Um, they like to play incredibly casual. Uh, I have a friend that will not play me, play a deck that I have, unless it is like a literally pure version of that deck. Uh, because he, that's what he thinks uh, deck, fun decks are. So that, that's, that's, that's for another time. But this card is still very, very good as a 3-0. I've seen a lot of people play it at 3. Realistically, you only need 2. I play in the three because I ran out of deck. I ran out of extra deck space. I didn't know what else to put in. Well, I didn't run out of space. Sorry, I didn't know what else to put in. That should be good discrepancy. I didn't know what else to put in, so I'm just running the third Chimera. Um, two Chimera, the Illusion Beast. This is another card I was actually running at three. Then I realized that Magnum the Reliever is straight up a better a better card to go into than Chimera. So I'm playing two Chimera and now three Magnum the Reliever. In the previous build of this, I was actually playing three and two rather than two and three, but 
Two Chimera the Illusion Beast. This card is how you're getting the OTK. Um, it requires Chimeras, the Flying Mythical Beast specifically, and one plus Illusion Monsters. Usually you're making this card with using three materials because this card has the effect. Or at least if you're trying to go for the OTK, you're using this card with at least three materials. Uh, assuming you don't have any additional monsters on your side of the field, if you're trying to just OTK with this card alone, this is how you're OTK. Uh, so this card's name becomes Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast while on the field or on the graveyard. This card can make a number of attacks each battle phase up to a number of materials used for it, so keep that in mind. Uh, if this card battles a monster, neither can be destroyed by that battle due to the fact that it's an illusion monster. And at the end of the damage step, if, if this card battled an opponent's monster, you can change that opponent's monster's attack to zero, also negate its effect. This is very powerful because the way you get this OTK with just this specific card, it's a little inconsistent, but usually you are bringing this card out with another card in rotation. So the attack of the opponent's monster that you can attack into is a, can be a little bit less so. As long as you have at least an 1800 beater and you use three materials for this guy, this card's an OTK, assuming your opponent doesn't have any other monsters in the field. Reason being, this card can attack into your opponent's monster, um, and then you deal whatever whatever damage you deal, or maybe you take damage. Since it's an illusion monster, now I think we're going to be destroyed by the battle, but at the end of the damage step, you can make that opponent's monster's attack to zero. Guess what? Chimera didn't destroy that monster due to the fact that it's an illusion monster. You can then attack it again two more times. This card has 3,100 attack. You can deal off of that alone 6,200 damage. And then as long as you can, uh, and it's attack is zero, still zero, you're out of attacks with Chimera. You've only done 62. Guess what? You can just attack with the 1,800, um, the other 1,800 point monster you have to deal the lethal blow. So this is how you're OTKing. You don't need, again, you don't need to OTK. This is just a good way, uh, a good way to OTK if you see an opportunity to do that. Um, but usually, you don't necessarily need it. One Chimera, the Flying Mythical Beast, as I already talked about with Fusion Armament. Three Magnum, the Reliever. I am such a big fan of this card in this deck because it does so, so much for this deck. You make this card as your... This card is basically your end board um, for that one turn combo, which I will be showing you guys. Uh, it has enough... Its Fusion Materials are a Monster Summoned from the Extra Deck, and a monster in the hand, okay? Monster in the extra deck, summon from the extra deck, and a monster in the hand. You can target a polymerization spell or fusion spell in your graveyard, place that card in the bottom of the deck, then draw one card. Should be noted, this can also be used with fusion armament since it is a fusion spell card. So you can use it with fusion armament to place it in the bottom of the deck and draw a card, but you're usually using this to put something like polymerization or chimera fusion back into the deck and keeping the fusion armament in the graveyard because its second effect has when another card or its effect is activated, quick effect, you can banish a polymerization spell or fusion spell from your graveyard, target a card in the field, and destroy it. This can be used to banish the fusion armament or your chimera fusion or your polymerization to just target a card in the field and destroy it. It's not in the gate, but it's a good form of interruption alongside stuff like Book of Moon, Cosmic, all this fun stuff to be able to use during your opponent's turn. And you also have something like chimera fusion where you can make this during your opponent's turn. And in fact, you're usually... Uh, you're either usually making this at the end of your combo, or you can make it during your opponent's draw phase or whatever. So, uh, if you don't already have it during your opponent's turn, you can make it with something like Chimera Fusion due to the fact that Chimera Fusion is a quick play. So I think this card's very, very good. And there are there was a combo that I did earlier today when I was testing out the deck a little bit further where I didn't open up the one card combo, but I was able to like normal summon Gazelle and do a bunch of different plays. Eventually going to Magnum the Reliever, but I need to do another Fusion Summon in order to... Um, I need to do another fusion summon in order to, to keep my plays going. Magnum Reliever is a fiend, so you can actually use him to go into Chimera alongside another beast. That's what I did. And then I actually just did the entire combo anyway to go into another Magnum Reliever. So I used two Magnum Relievers to end on one what, by uh, while also setting up like my graveyard in my hand with all the cards necessary to keep my plays going. Um... That's why I like running the three is because if you do something like that where like you can fusion summon into Magnum the Reliever, uh, if, you, if you fusion summon into this card but you don't have the necessary pieces, you can still continue going by using this card as fusion material, but I but it's beneficial to still end on at least one. So that's the entire reason I'm playing three and that's why I feel, if that made no sense, I can real quick uh, at the end basically show you what I mean. Uh, then for the Link Monsters, I so far have not summoned a single one of these in testing, um, but they're here in case you need them. 
Nightmare Unicorn to spin stuff. So Phoenix pop spells and traps. Cerberus pops pop, pop monsters. IP Masquerina, so we can make any of them during our final turn. Cross Sheep. Usually, honestly, I don't think Cross Sheep that good in this deck because it can't even summon back something like Pro from that. But it can summon back something like Mirror Sword Knight, so I do still think it's at least helpful. And Apollosa just as a good negation. But that's going to be it. Let's get into the actual combo. So this is the one card combo with Mirror Sword Knight. As you're going to see, you honestly don't end on anything too insane but keep in mind that you will have an additional four cards in hand at once it's all said and done so we're gonna go ahead normal summon mirror sword knight and activate the effect to special summon a big winged burfamant straight from our deck we're gonna activate the big winged burfamant grabbing the gazelle and the chimera fusion and then immediately after that resolves we're gonna go ahead activate this chimera fusion fusion summoning into chimera the king uh the whatever it's called the king of phantom beasts now uh, now you have this. Once you fusion summon, you have the fusion summon effect of Chimera, but then you also have the fusion material effects of Big Wing Burfament and Gazelle. Usually the way I personally like to sequence this chain is Gazelle and Chain Link 1, Burfament and Chain Link 2, and Chimera and Chain Link 3. The reason I like doing it like that is because, um, for starters, actually, yeah, we've got, got the Nightmare Magician. Uh, also, make sure you grab the Nightmare Magician. You can grab Coatl, uh if you already have the Nightmare Magician in hand. Uh, actually, that would be beneficial, uh, but I would highly recommend gra grabbing the Nightmare Magician, as you guys are about to see why. Um, but uh, that the reason I like ch uh, doing the chain, the chain link like that is because by doing it like that, you go Gazelle Chain Link One. Gazelle adds a monster from deck to hand, but if you but you can chain block it with the um, you can chain block it with the Burfamet to prevent it from being ashed or anything like that. However, the Burfamet can still be hit by something like a Ghost Bell. But you can still chain block it with the Chimera, which all it does is rip a card out of your opponent's hand. So unless your opponent has something like Effect Veiler, they won't be able uh, 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 they won't be able to stop that effect with a hand trap. Uh, and by chain blocking, you'll make sure the Burfamet and the Gazelle's effects both resolve. So that's why. Uh, next up, we're going to activate the, the Graveyard Effect of Chimera Fusion to add it to, back to our hand. And we're going to immediately activate the Chimera Fusion again to go into Magnum and the Reliever using the Chimera and the Nightmare Magician. Uh, off of this, this is what we end on. We can, if we want to, also activate the Magnum and Reliever to shuffle the Chimera Fusion back into the deck um, and then draw a card. You don't have to, but you absolutely can. Um, and in fact, I think actually um, I personally will. Uh, I didn't shuffle the deck, so it just gave me a gazelle, but that could potentially draw into something like Book of Moon or whatever, so that's very, very powerful. But we're not done with this combo yet. That's the, this is our end board. It's not, as I said, not a very amazing end board, but it's good enough in my opinion. Then we go end phase. Uh, obviously, this card that card from our opponent's hand, but now we're going to actually activate the effect of Chimera in the graveyard to bring back Nightmare Magician. Now, we can also go for the Mirror Sword Knight to summon out, once again, a Burfamet, and then we can activate the Burfamet again to be able to grab, once again, the Chimera Fusion and the Gazelle. Uh, or if we drew a Gazelle off that like that, you can grab the OG Gazelle, and then you end on that for your end board. Now, should be noted, you do still have uh, with that, um, this is this is your end board, and the reason why I don't really like doing that shuffle back is because Magnum or Lever is at least some form of interaction during your opponent's turn to at least pop a card. So using the one card combo like that, um, where you use the uh, first effect of Magnum Reliever to at least draw a card. You can do it, but if you're only doing the one card combo and nothing else, I wouldn't because then you don't actually end with a uh, fusion card in your graveyard. But that right there is the one card combo for this, and that is just how, exactly how this works. However, that is going to be uh, it for this video, and that's going to be it for the entire deck profile. So I really hope you guys enjoy. Um, let me know down below what, what changes you might make to the deck because I'm personally as well still learning this deck. And uh, let me also know what kind of deck profiles you want to see next. For example, if you want to see that updated Cyber Dragon deck profile, let me know. I have a Pearly deck profile I can do. Uh, I have Goaty that I can do. There's a lot of different profiles that I can do. Hopefully it's a deck that I know and actually play, because if not, I might not willing to do it. For example, I refuse to play Altergeist. Uh, I just don't really enjoy Altergeist all that much, so stuff like that. Uh, I don't really enjoy playing those, but I can maybe see what I can do with some decks that I might have some interest in, some decks I might not have interest in, blah, 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 all that stuff, all the fun stuff. But let me know what kind of deck profiles you guys want, you guys want to see next. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. I really hope you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you stop the like button and subscribe for more. Hope to see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.